Hello everyone, my name is Andreas Lesch and I'm from Graz University of Technology. Today I'm going to talk about ultra-fast 3D proxy B1 mapping using variational modeling. In vivo B1 mapping is a quite long-term research topic in MRI dating back into the 80s. Since then many different methods have been developed where most of them suffer from quite long acquisition times. Today, scan time is still a challenge, uh, in particular if you think of 3D measurements. The goal of this work was now uh, to implement a B1 mapping method that allows the acquisition of a 3D volume within a single breath hold period. As a motivation, I would like to show you um, some uh, applications for B1 mapping. One of the most applications would be the correction for quantitative MRI methods like D1 mapping, T2 mapping, CEST, or many others. Uh, many signal models used for that purpose uh, can highly depend on the actual flip angle. And this can lead to a strong systematic error in the subsequent quantification procedure. Um, here you can see a sample T1 map gained with the method of variable flip angle. In the uncorrected case, you can see uh, that there is a huge inhomogeneity here in the central part of the brain. Um, but this effect can be easily corrected by measuring the B1 field distribution and incorporating it into the model. Another very important application would be B1 shaming. Um, if you use more than one uh, uh, channel for uh, transmit, um, then it is possible to balance out some B1 uh, inhomogeneities unto, until a certain degree. But to achieve this, it is necessary to measure um, the B1 uh, contribution of each channel in advance. For this work, we chose the method of Proxiget um, because it is already quite fast and it was the first method which is able to directly measure the B1 field instead of the flip angle alpha. The method of Proxiget was presented by Sakuli Gadar in 2010. And the main idea of this method is to apply an off-resonant RF field uh, where the resonance offset is much bigger than gamma uh, times B1. If this is done, um, then a certain shift in resonance frequency can be observed. If such a pulse is applied over a certain time, um, the underlying signal is affected by an additional phase term, the so-called Bloch-Sigurd phase, which is proportional to the squared B1 peak magnitude and a constant only depending on the pulse parameter. Um, compared to other methods, uh, this method is already quite fast because there are no dependencies on relaxation time. With that, a single slice acquisition can be done in about 10 to 15 seconds. But of course, there are some limitations uh, for this method, in particular if you think of breathhold acquisition. Um, the most important limitation is the high energy deposition of the block Siegert pulse, which making the method very prone to run into SAR limitations, which restricts the minimum possible uh, repetition time. <clears throat> If you now think on 3D acquisitions or a multi-transmit setting, the acquisition time can easily increase into the order of several minutes. One possible solution that we propose is to combine undersampling and the variational reconstruction approach uh, to gain a huge acceleration of this measurement. Now I would like to talk a little bit about variational image reconstruction. Um, the reconstruction process is rewritten as a minimization task and the goal is now to find an unknown image uh, by the minimization of a functional. This functional consists of a data fidelity term and a regularization term. The data fidelity term itself consists of the forward model, including coil sensitivities, discrete Fourier operator and the undersampling pattern. And it further measures the difference between the calculated forward model and the measured undersampled case-based data. Um, the regularization term um, enforces specific properties of the underlying image U, um, and this is called uh, regularization. The regularization term further stabilizes the solution of this optimization problem, which is an uh, ill post um, inverse problem. So to say, the regularization term includes some prior knowledge of the underlying image <coughs> and some. Uh, Commonly used um, uh, functionals for regularization, for example, the Tikhonov regularization, the H1 regularization, or the total variation. 
What prior knowledge do we have? First about the P1 field. Due to Maxwell's equation, we know that it has to be smooth and uh, continuous in space. And no anatomical structures should be visible in the P1 field. This property can be easily enforced using the H1 regularization, where um, the squared L2 norm of the image gradient is penalized. What do we know about the underlying image? We know that some discontinuities appear in the signal at tissue boundaries and the signal is further modulated with receiver and excitation profiles, leading to a piecewise smooth uh, appearance uh, of the underlying image and this can be enforced using the total generalized variation uh, regularization. Now let's set up the bloch siegert reconstruction problem. We already know that the bloch siegert phase is proportional to the squared P1 peak magnitude. Uh, to get rid of other phase effects, two acquisitions are necessary, one with positive and one with negative resonance offset. In the fully sampled case, it is quite easy to gain uh, this bloch siegert phase uh, by applying a complex division uh, of these two acquisitions. In the undersampled case, uh, we have to set up an optimization problem. This optimization problem uh, consists of two data fidelity terms, one for the positive and one for the negative resonance offset acquisition. Further, we have to apply two regularization terms for the variables P and Q, uh, which have to be minimized. The variable P uh, is the B1 independent uh, part of the signal, which only depends on the uh, background, on the underlying structure. The variable Q is the B1 field dependent part of the signal, um, depending on the bloch siegert phase. Um, what is the problem now? This uh, optimization problem is highly non-convex due to a coupling uh, between both uh, data fidelity terms. And it can therefore not be guaranteed to reach a global optimal solution. To overcome this problem, we apply a change of variables where we replace the variables P and Q by new variables U and V according to uh, this definition. With that, we can rewrite the data fidelity terms of the optimization problem uh, leading to that form. According to the definition of the two new variables which have to be optimized, uh, we can now select a proper regularization to enforce uh, the properties of interest. The variable u uh, mainly depends on the morphological structure and therefore uh, we decided to use a total generalized variation regularization for this var variable to enforce this piecewise smooth uh, solution. The variable v only depends on the B1 dependent bloch siegert phase and therefore we decided to uh, apply a smoothness constraint, the so-called H1 regularization. Coming back to the data fidelity term, you can see that the variable v only appears in the second um, data fidelity term, uh, but uh, it is still coupled uh, in the variable u, making the problem still non-convex. But due to this reformulation, it is quite easy uh, to decouple the problems, uh, to decouple the problem uh, or by in the variable u and v. Um, this leads me uh, to our final reconstruction uh, solution, the so-called so two-step reconstruction. Um, in the first step, we set V to zero. Uh, with that, we gain an optimization problem with decouples for U. And this is the resulting optimization problem, which is non-differentiable but uh, convex. Um, and this class of optimization problems can be easily solved using the primal dual algorithm. If we uh, gain a solution for u, we can now plug in this uh, solution as a constant into the previous optimization problem. And with that, uh, we gain a new optimization problem, uh, which is now decoupled for v. And in the second step, we solve uh, this optimization problem, uh, which is differentiable and convex and can be easily solved using the conjugate gradient algorithm. If we now have obtained a solution for V, the underlying B1 field distribution can be easily calculated using this simple formula. Uh, we use two uh, different kinds of undersampling patterns, the block pattern and the Gaussian pattern. The block pattern simply samples a block of size n times m in the case space center of the three-dimensional case space. 
The Gaussian pattern is a random variable density pattern with an underlying Gaussian density function. This density function is parameterized by the standard deviation in both phase encoding direction. Now I would like to show you some results. Um, here you can see the reconstruction results achieved retrospectively undersampled out of a fully sampled reference with our two-step reconstruction method for different block sizes and their recording acceleration factors. The results are compared to a zero-padded uh, solution with the same amount of data. The error maps here um, show the error compared to the fully sampled reference. You can see for each uh, pattern size a huge improvement can be gained using our two-step reconstruction. Even for the very low amount of data by using only 4x4 um, encodings in case space center, um, a good estimate for the underlying P1 filter distribution can be reached. The best result can be reached by using the block size of 12 times 4 um, where we can reach an average error below 0.7% um, resulting in an acquisition time of about 12 seconds. Um, here we in investigated the influence of a different irregular undersampling pattern and it turned out uh, to work best if the same instance of a Gaussian random uh, variable density pattern is used for both acquisitions uh, with a high density around uh, the K-space center. The results um, lead to, an, uh, mo to a similar result as the, the block pattern where we achieved an error below 0.7% uh, in average. Here you can see some results uh, acquired prospectively subsampled uh, using the block pattern in three different anatomical regions. You can see in the error maps that the solutions of our two-step reconstruction method are in very good accordance to an additionally acquired fully sampled reference. Um, in the neat data set you can further see that the fully sampled reference uh, is corrupted by some flow artifacts and in the low signal region uh, of the bone um, additional artifacts occur. Uh, due to uh, the variation of reconstruction, these artifacts can uh, be suppressed uh, quite well using our two-step reconstruction method. Um, in the liver data set you can see uh, the results for three different pattern sizes all acquired within a single breath hold. We could show that variational reconstruction allows 3D P1 mapping within a single breath hold. The error due to undersampling is lower than 0.7% in average and lower than 3% in maximum. <coughs> Some artifacts may occur due to flow uh, where triggering might be a solution. Uh, whereas our method also reduces the flow artifact compared to the fully sample uh, reference uh, we were able to show in the knee data set. Uh, no complicated undersampling pattern uh, is necessary to apply this method. To sample a simple block uh, in the case based center is sufficient. Undersampling further strongly re reduces the delivered uh, energy leading to a better SAR behavior. Due to the higher field variations and the SAR problem uh, at 7 Tesla, more investigation is necessary for an application of this method at ultra-high field strength. With that, I would like to conclude and thank you for listening.